Hello there, and welcome back to episode 2 of the Ultimate Guide to Dark Souls! Okay, there's no need for being like that, but yeah... yeah this um, is our second time recording, I feel like I might space it up a little bit. Anyway, so this uh, episode is going to be covering the Undead Bug. We're going to be showing you how to get every item in the Undead Bug, some strategies in attacking the Undead Bug, and indeed how to get the Drape Sword, and how to get the Dark Knight... The, the how to defeat the first Black Knight ridiculously easily. Now I know there's like a bunch of guides that tell you all these things individually, but I don't think you'll, you'll be hard pressed to find a guide that tells you all these things in one go. Alright, now that we're finished sucking our own dicks we can get on with the gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, just clear out these hollows here because um, you may as well get as many souls as you can on the way through at this bonfire. Every every single every single soul you pick up is going to help when it comes to completing this build the same way we do. Yeah, it's true. I mean, when you really look at this, everything just seems to fall into place absolutely perfectly. Um, you do get a few souls here or there that are spare, or you do, get a few, you do have like the tiniest bit of grinding to do, but you don't even have to do any grinding until after Anno Londo, everything just falls perfectly into place based on anyway, the amount of souls and shit, so... It's always good to kill that rat to get one humanity, and... Um, well, to get the chance to get one humanity. Yeah, some, sometimes rats drop humanity, and... Uh, Highest we, drop rate in the game, except the DLC. And we need uh, the humanity for doing the um, Chaos Covenant, which... Yeah. Is the covenant that we will be picking for this playthrough? Yeah, you'll see us join that covenant in Blight Town, and it's immediately useful. As soon as you join it, you get a very good pyromancy. But you'll see that in the Blight Town video. Right now, um, you want to finish up taking. You want to finish taking out the rest of these hollows, and then we're going to go start grabbing the items in this little area here before we pass through that fog gate that's currently behind us. Now, these uh, hollows here are the Hollow Warriors. Now, the Hollow Warriors will drop the Hollow Warrior armor. Amongst a bunch of different weapons, the Hollow Warrior Short swords, armor, broken swords, straight sword hilts, those kind of things. Useless. Yeah, like... Cracked round shield, especially useless. They'll sometimes drop fire bombs, but really fire bombs are totally outclassed by black fire bombs, so it doesn't matter. So, break these barrels and we'll grab our first soul pack, which is a, last, which is a large soul of the lost undead. Uh, not a lot of souls, but, you know, it's more than zero. Again, they all add up. So, there's another soul pack in here. Um, a lot of people don't know how to get this item. Uh, you usually pass by it in the ladder over there, and it's just like, it took me quite a few playthroughs yeah. before I figured out this was here, so, uh, you know, there's that. Going back to the uh, the hollow uh, warrior armor is... Useless. Yeah, it really is. It's one of the worst armor sets in the game. However, um, the bigger hollows, which we'll show you later, drop the hollow um, soldier armor. Now, the Hollow Soldier armor still isn't very good, however, the Hollow Soldier leggings part of the armor is... The waist um, cloth. The waist cloth is incredibly good for the amount of poise it gives to the amount of... the amount it actually weighs. Yeah, so like, if you're not going on it's just It's good pure. to get that. If you can pick that up, that's good. Yeah, if you're not basing it just on pure stats, like, if you want to, if you want to like, base your character or base your build in a sort of defense or, like, a sort of these values to how much weight it has, then yeah. the Hollow the hollow Soldier Waist Cloth is by far the best poise-to-weight ratio uh, for your uh, legs in the game. Anyway, uh, so... Very light, very good poise. As you saw, as you seen there, we picked up the item Rubbish. There's only two Rubbish in the game. One here and one DLC. The second is utterly useless. Because you can't trade it back to Snuggly. But the first yep. one, this one here, you can trade to Snuggly for a Titan 8 chunk. Which we have to do because... To, to complete it this all build. works out. Yeah, we, we want to get Titan 8 chunks to upgrade our weapon. So, just lightning. showing you, that's where we were two seconds ago, this is where we are now. Time to pass through the fog gate, and wouldn't you believe it, as soon as you go through the gate, there's a cheeky soul packet right under these stairs. So yeah, soul lost undead. You want, now, you want to come up here, um, on the left there is a jump, but you can't actually make that. You can, I mean, it looks like you should be able to cross that, but you can't. Keep your shield up here, just advance forward, the drake won't touch you. Um, but yeah, you can't actually make that jump. We'll show you how to do that jump later on in the game. You actually have to take um, a little bit more of a higher route. But right here, um, don't do it this way because we turned our back to the archer and the it's, always, it's, always, it's always bad. As you can see um, how, how close we were to the wall there and it still almost hit us. Um, I personally would have went and killed him first, but you had other methods. Well, I wanted to go down to the... And I think I wanted to get all items before I came back. This is why I would have killed the archer. You'll see here in a second. We go for an attack as the hollow is vulnerable and boom. <laughs> right in the face. Yep, right in the face and right in the side again when the hollow was vulnerable. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, it's really best to try and when you come into the courtyard for the first time, bait out the hollows to begin with. 
Yeah. Right. Anyway, well, so now. here we first <laughs> encounter the undead merchant. He sells a bunch of useful items, and we recommend not killing them. However, if you do kill them, you get the residence key, the orange sign soapstone, and you get the Yuchi katana. We can't use the Yuchi katana for this build because it requires 14 decks, and we're only going up to 12. We're going to show you how to get the Yuchi katana by the other method later on in the game, but we're just saying that this is how you can get it. Right now, we want to um, use all the soul packets that we picked up at this point, and we want to buy the residence key because we're not killing them, we want to keep them alive. And we want to buy um, the uh, heater shield because it is the lightest shield in the game that blocks 100% physical damage, which is really great at this point, and this will be doing us right up until we get the boulder shield. It, has yeah. it doesn't have amazing <laughs> stability, but it's it's still it's 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 good all round. It weighs two. It's got hundred block. You you really can't expect anything more from a shield that weighs two. It's not as if it's going to stop. Um, like you, you're not going to be able to obviously you know stand in front of the biggest enemy in the game and take a hit. I mean, it, it only weighs two. And I mean, look at the size of the shield as well. Generally, I find I find that in Dark Souls, this is something that I've noticed. Uh, the size of the shields tend to represent the stability of them as well. Yeah. The so, smaller shields have like no stability at all, whereas bigger shields like the Boulder Shield, which is one of the biggest shields, one of the biggest, it's the largest medium shield in the game, not as in weight or anything like that, just as in size, and it has the highest stability of the medium shields, so, I mean, the size of the shield probably, obviously represents that. We should probably mention what stability is. Uh, stability is a modifier that you have on your shield, we don't know exactly how it works, but what we do know is that the higher your stability is, the less stamina it costs for you to block an attack. And it means that, say you have a low amount of stamina and a high amount of stability, you can still block attacks with that low amount of stamina, but if your shield has low stability and you get hit with an attack, it will take off more stamina, and if that attack would completely uh, drain all your stamina, the attack's still going to go through still going to go through hit and hit you. Uh, no, it won't. Sometimes they won't hit you if they drain your stamina. Oh, some, by sometimes a little bit. It, it like totally yeah. breaks your guard. Anyway, you, you end up getting staggered and left vulnerable. We need to go back now, so. As you can see there, when we climbed up those ladders, we picked up the throne knives. The throne knives aren't amazing, however, they are useful in Blight Town because you can hit the flies with them. And then flies we are a pain in the ass. We saw there that we can then jump over that gap that we explained earlier to grab the crossbow. Uh, now the crossbows are really You're still refusing to kill that guy, and it's really fucking bugging me. <laughs> the crossbows are still like they're really uh, not that good. They are completely. Like, we personally say that normal bows completely outclass them. Except the Avalon. Except the Avalon, of course. But that's that's not even a crossbow, that's a fucking hand cannon. Yeah, that's, that's, like a, that's a machine gun. But <laughs> Machine gun? Well, I suppose by Dark Souls standards, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> it just fires lightning and hurt. <laughs> so yeah, we rest that bonfire, replenish the rest, this gives us a checkpoint. Um, now I believe it's time to uh, advance further through the level. We've gathered up the heater shield and the residence key because those are two items we want to pick up right from the beginning. Um, so we can get access to all these levels. Now, you can actually access a lot of this without the residence key using just the master key, but you do need the residence key for Lower and Deadburg. And plus it just goes to show, if you didn't take the master key, then you can still act access all the areas that we're about to go yeah. through as well. Um, so these guys here, these will drop their battle axe if you're lucky, um, but this guy right here, the one with the shield, he is the hollow soldier, he will drop the hollow soldier waist cloth if you're lucky, he'll drop his shield, he'll drop various parts of his armour, the hollow soldiers don't have gauntlets by the way, um, and he will also drop a long sword as well, um, not all at the same time of course, Dark Souls isn't that generous ever. Um, so just As we can see here, this, is the, this is the heal miracle, like... Use, using it at these kind of times yeah, just to replenish safe. your health it, it, essentially yeah when it's safe um, I'm going to talk more about the crossbows actually like the crossbows really aren't that useful a lot of people say that later on in the game we'll be versing a, a boss duo called Ornstein Smo and a lot of people say that the crossbow is a good way of doing it and now Epic Name Bro like completely destroyed them using the crossbow but it's incredibly time consuming and you really need to time things well and it's just much safer than going toe to toe with them but it does take ages uh huh and I, I mean really like I the find the longer a boss fight goes on the more room you have to screw up exactly that, that's the point that we need to make the longer the boss fight goes on the more, the more chance you have to screw up yeah, so, like, how, how many times have any of us just got to a boss, we get down to the tiniest bit of health and then we get fucked? How many times has that happened? But, uh, our method... Gwyn, anyone? <laughs> our method was using a totally different way, it was really direct, and it was using the, um, the dark wood green ring to uh, give us more invincibility frames. 
Anyway, the point is... It's not just invincibility frames, it's also quicker recovery speed as well on your rolls, which yeah, is so fantastic. We found that the Dark so Wood Green Ring and then using the fully upgraded uh, Lightning Halberd was an incredibly effective way of taking yeah, them down. Yeah, we, we didn't even have to block once the entire fight, essentially, because they just couldn't get close enough to hit That's us, true. and whenever they were vulnerable, the Halberd's quick enough to just give them a quick jab here and there. Anyway, enough about what we're going to do, more about what we are doing. Right, so as we've progressed up, we saw those three hollows there. Um, there's really no great way of getting, like, taking them on. You kind of just want to... Go for the one with the fireballs first yeah. is the only advice we can give you. He's your biggest threat. I hate this moment so because I almost rolled off. And if I rolled off, I, I would have landed on the ground down below, but there is always the chance that Dark Souls feels like being a dick and bouncing me off the side. So as you can see, those fireball hollows do drop uh, firebombs. Uh, also, you want to go up the tower and defeat the crossbow hollow because... When you come up here, the crossbow hollow can still shoot you. Yeah, the crossbow hollow can still hit you um, on the way up to the Taurus Demon as well. So, he's actually one of these uh, hollows that they've placed that has an amazing line of sight over the entire area. Yeah. Except directly below him. So, we want to use the residence key to open that door here. Or the master key if you didn't buy the residence or key, the which you should have. Uh, to open uh, this to get the gold pine resin. The gold pine resins are ridiculously handy for several bosses through the game up until we get an elemental weapon, so it's definitely handy to pick them up. Even without an elemental weapon, um, gold pine resin is still a uh, very good late game. Um, like If you're making some sort of dex build that uses spells for weapon buffs, then gold pine resin is just a good thing to run about with. Yeah. Uh, just to have on your weapon for when you're you know, you're know not wanting to waste your crystal magic weapon or your dark moon blade or something like that. But Anyway, you just want to be careful here. So um, at, th at this point, yeah, you, we want to bait out um, these hollows in individually. You want to get the shield guy first. Uh, when you pick up the gold pine resin, if you stand on the left side of that treasure chest, um, what will happen is that you'll aggro that hollow. And when you come back out here, it'll be coming up the stairs to meet you. So you just take them on there. So when you, to take out these hollows, again, just like we said in the last video. Take your time. Take your time. Um, you can. I mean, there's numerous ways. An easy way is just to kick them and then go in for a heavy attack. Or you can just keep attacking until you break the guard. Or you can... Jump attack them from the top of the stairs to the bottom. Whatever floats your boat, really. Yeah, exactly. But it's just the best The best way, really, is just to be careful. So don't go down that way yet. Then We were looking down a, a set of stairs there. Don't go down that way yet, because that's the Black Knight. We'll show you how to take him out uh, a little bit later on in this video. I believe it's coming up soon, actually, because we're going to take on this boss, and then we're going to take out the Black Knight and the Drake at the same time, I believe. Uh, well, one after the other, rather. So, this right here is the door to Havels. Be very careful. If you do decide to go down there, you can get access to it with the Master Key, but you better have your rolling down to an absolute fucking perfect Havel has Havel has so much defence and health at this point that really is highly recommended that you don't it's do it. It's gonna take you yeah, about 20 backstabs to take him down, maybe by half. So, as you see here, we came up the stairs and doubled back, and we smashed the front two barrels. This uh, was a crystal lizard. If you kill the, these crystal lizards, drop ores that you can use to upgrade your items during the game. They will always drop two twinkling titanite, which always. is why it's great to have equipment that upgrades via twinkling titanite because it's incredibly abundant. And um, now this one, we were lucky enough to get a titanite chunk from it. Um, we, now, like I said, we need titanite chunks, and having that one drop the titanite chunk was incredibly lucky because it then gave us the exact amount of titanite chunks that we needed when it came to upgrading our weapon Look, and our wando. I say that when it happened and I'll say it again. That was lucky getting a chunk. What the fuck do you call getting four titanite slabs in the Great Hollow? Yeah, okay, that also happened as well. That, Somehow, well, that like, is a that's freak an, of that's nature. An anomaly. So yeah, you're not in combat. The boss isn't coming yet so you can heal. There's actually a rock. If, um, uh, wait, the first thing you want to do though, like like we've done there, the first thing you want to do is definitely kill both those hollows. Yeah, you, you need this ledge. So there's this rock right here. You right, take a few steps past it, Taurus Demon jumps and then you sprint back. Get back up that ladder, back on top of your perch. So that's where you want to be for this fight. For at least the first 10-15 seconds of it anyway. So once you go up, uh, do what you've done with the Asylum Room and you want to double hand your weapon and do a jumping attack off the edge. Now, we only hit him once here, but you can hit him twice, um, and that applies the gold pine resin buff twice. So if we hit him twice there, we would have taken away easily more than three quarters of his health. Now, um, another thing is that you can you can easily just avoid his attacks and then run, like go back up the ladder again, and then just do another jumping attack, and you can just keep doing that until he dies. Normally it'll be two jumping attacks, and then like you hit him with them once. And then yeah. that's we we um, once you get him down to about here. He usually staggers, but yeah, yeah. 
Uh, you also want to keep them up that end of the bridge if you can when you're fighting them, because right there on the left, you'll see it when the camera rotates again, is that there's actually a break in the wall. He can knock you off that if you try to block... Right there. He can he can knock you off that, um, so you want to keep him down to the other side of the bridge where, you know, there isn't as many cracks in it and you can't fall off it. You can actually, he can fall off it, um, if he jumps back, he can jump off the bridge, the fucking huh. idiot that he is. So. The, ne the next thing is that the Taurus Demon can, in fact, drop his weapon as well. Yep, and here's one of the hidden items not a lot of people grab or know about because they never look in boxes because Dark Souls never has anything in boxes. It's like four things. But yeah. So, here's what we do. What do we want to run onto the bridge and then this is going to act this is going to activate the dragon attacking the bridge and it's going to blast fire through the whole thing so that's going to kill you if you're on the bridge when that happens. Yeah, you want to basically, you don't even want to stand at the entrance. You want to, base, you want to go down here and talk to Slayer while it's happening and save some time. Yeah. You answer him twice you say yes to him you oh, just exhaust his dialogue it will give you the white sign soapstone which allows you to summon uh, which allows you to Go put your summon sign down so you can help people uh, with bosses or areas and also um, now I believe multiplayer is available to you for the first time is, yeah. it, or is it available earlier for you uh, I think you can access it earlier anyway so also um, at this point you can kill Solera if you want get all his gear but we sh it's usually more beneficial to keep him alive till we stand or Londo anyway in, in this playthrough we are going to be keeping Soler uh, alive uh, straight through until then because we want yep, to do he's gonna all help NPC us. quests he's so going to help us with the final boss as well because we take him all the way he's incredibly the good for the final way. boss we're also going to show you what happens when you don't save him for the final boss and um, when you do kill Soler he drops uh, his entire armour set his sword his shield and his talisman and all of them are uh, above average sets of equipment. Yeah, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to jump in here and we're not going to level up just yet. What we're going to do is, although we've got about, is it 6,000 souls we have there? 5,257 souls we've got right now. Although we do have that, we're not going to level up yet. We have to spend the souls before we level up. We need to grab ourselves the short bow and 100 arrows. Once we have the short 100 arrows, the souls that we have left, we can spend on whatever we want. So we're going to get our dex and our strength up after we get the ball. So right now it's just the exact same as last time. Clean out the hollows, start with the archer, and then you're pretty much safe to take these guys on in any way you see fit, really. So these shield hollows, once again, the best thing to do, kick and then attack, or wait for them to attack and they will deflect off the shield, because spears have shit deflection. So it turns out you can kick one into another and both of them will stagger. Yeah, what well, do you know? Stuff that I only figured out when we first recorded this video many a moon ago. About five weeks now, something like that. Yeah, it must have been. But basically, this is us just getting ready to do it because we actually we've recorded the entire series. The full I thing is going. done. Never. Now we're just getting <laughs> the commentary done for it. So, as I said, we're going to buy. Anyway, this uh, merchant. Right, so at this point, we're going to buy the. Short bow and arrows. But this merchant also sells the repair box and the bottomless box, which are very useful. And a load of useless weapons, which are outclassed by the other weapons. Dagger outclassed by the bandit dagger. Short sword outclassed by the long sword and other things. Scimitar outclassed by the falchion. Rapier outclassed by the s -dock. Hand, Hand axe, axe is just bad. Yeah, the club is also just bad because it's completely outclassed by the reinforced club, which is one of the best strength weapons in the game. The spear is outclassed by the partisan, the wing spear, the dragon slayer spear, the everything else spear. All the shields are shit except from the heater shield. Uh, the buckler shield is actually good if you're a parry in class because it gives you extra frames. Okay, well, there is that. So It's then got a unique parry animation that gives you a longer parrying window, not by an awful lot, it gives you an extra two frames, which if you work that out is an extra two tenths of a second. What? Oh yeah, and the target shield is better than the buckler because it's got a lower dex requirement as well, so there's that. Um, so yeah, we're just going to buy 100 arrows, buy the short bow, and that's a set to go take on the black knight and the dragon. He also sells the chain helm, and he also sells repair powder as well. It Really, this is a very useful merchant because he is oh, the only merchant in the game, you. aside from Marvel's much. chest on the DLC. So if you don't have the DLC, you may not want to kill him if you want to go into uh, player versus player because he's the only merchant that sells Lloyd's talismans, which are yeah. ridiculously useful in P a PvP. They're because invaluable. they stop your opponent. If you're invading your opponent, you can throw a Lloyd's talisman at them and they won't be able to use the rest of the flask. Yeah, they, they can't heal up, so that's very good. Or at the very least, the only way they can heal up is by using humanity, which puts you on an even ground because you can yeah. use humanity as well. So at this point, um, we should level up. We need to get our. Uh, if you don't have the same amount of souls that we do, Get your decks up to 12 before you do anything else. You need 12 dexterity to use the short bow. 
but you you definitely want to have 16 strength and 12 dexterity at this point so really it's also recommended to just grind a little bit until you get the zone yeah make sure you're at 16 and 12 because then your build's going along the same lines that ours is and that is fantastic because this build it doesn't trivialize the game as such but it does make the, the game a little bit simpler it, it levels up in such a way where the level you are reflects how the level you should be for co-op yeah. and how difficult the enemies are it just, it just syncs so well with both the online and offline aspects of the game that this is probably it's probably one of the best builds to go with for pve purposes yeah. player pvp player, is different it's, it's it's player versus player it's ridiculously ridiculously average but for player versus environment it is it is really really good it's not even good in player versus player I mean, there's a few times where we do get invaded and I do kick the shit out of the cunts, but they were really subpar players and or I get very lucky. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I, I made a PvP build that was just awful. Awful in PvE. Like, I had so much trouble trying to take on bosses and shit with it because it was it was burst damage, it wasn't consistent, but yeah. in PvP, because the fights don't last very long, then you can take on classes that use like all these buffs and shit to do extreme amounts of damage. I believe you get fucked up pretty badly here, don't you? Uh, yeah, I do. At this point, we are just continuing on to where we said to not go down. So, obviously, we'll show you where that is. And what we're showing you here as well is that there is no method to take out these guys efficiently. It's just a case of running and smash them as quickly as you yeah, fucking I mean, can. We're really experienced players, and sometimes these guys just get you. It's just what I mean, I, I, I do consider myself to be very fucking good at PvE. PvP, I'd say I'm an average player, but there, there is like no way to take these guys on efficiently other than just go straight for the guy in the middle. I'm fairly sure you can uh, you can run round uh, to the left or right and you can get them with a running attack and it might one hit them if you're lucky, but it really depends if you get an attack of opportunity or not, which is a game mechanic that we can delve into in a later video. Um, but yeah, so the exact same as last time, aggro these guys one at a time, take them out and, you know, just play it safe because you're not in any rush here, you've got no one to impress, you're just playing the game, uh, your playtime isn't an issue, it's more a case of um, whether or not you can get through the game efficiently or you know, essentially you just don't want to die too much. As you can see these hollows also drop titanite shards which is useful for upgrading your weapon early on. Yeah, um, there actually is a blacksmith available to you right now, we showed you in the first video, there is Rickert who is so. under the Firelink Shrine, you can go there and you can upgrade your Battle Axe to plus one, but we're not going to upgrade the Battle Axe at all because we're not going to be using it for much longer. I believe this is the last time we used the Battle Axe in the entire game. Uh, indeed it is. So right now, uh, you can actually walk up and get the backstab, but we attacked too late. Yeah. And um. subsequently paid for it by getting our back cut. So we're getting... Oh, right. Um, now, the item that you saw just ahead of the Black Knight, that's the blue tear stone ring. We forget to come back and get it, but we're mentioning that's the item that we're like essentially going to get. Yeah. But yeah, so you come back here and you go and get the blue tear stone ring. I guess it's it's the first thing that you're gonna really get during this. Uh, You've killed all the enemies in the way there anyway. So whether you get it or not, um, if you don't get it, then you're gonna essentially follow our build exactly as it's going. Um, it doesn't really make a difference due to the fact yeah. that it's a useless ring for as far as I'm concerned. You have to be at very low health before you get the defense boost, and even at that point, your health is so low the defense boost doesn't even fucking matter. So, you it's know, a shame. yeah, I think you need to be under twenty percent health. You get a fifty percent defensive boost, but when you're under twenty percent health and you've only got an extra fifty percent boost, you're still probably going to be in the one hit to kill range. So, yeah. what's the point in that ring? You know, red tear stone ring is completely different because it gives you a fifty percent attack buff, which is fucking immense. Anyway, so what you want to do is you want to equip your short bow and your arrows, obviously. And now you can't aim down, so you need to lock on them. Yep, and make sure his shield is a, his shield is either um, it's not raised or he isn't facing you before you take the shot because you want to hit him for 15 with every arrow not one or you don't want you want him not to dodge so we're going to speed this bit up because it can take a couple of minutes and um, I believe it takes us about 45-50 uh, seconds for us to fly through this so we're just going to speed it up quickly um, and you can see that after a while you eventually do wear him down as you can see we do get one every now and again because the shield does get in the way sometimes and that is unfortunate yeah um, so we get lucky in the case that the Black Knight drops his shield as well. Uh, the Black Knight shield is probably one of my favourite shields in the game. The Black Knight and the Boulder shield are the two best medium shields in the game. Uh, they both get really high stability. The Boulder shield has got 
all right defenses but it does have the high stability the black knight shield has got the second high stability i believe the border shield only beats it by one and the black knight shield has 95 percent fire block but it does weigh two more than the boulder shield so so the black knight shield is actually incredibly good for blocking gwen's attacks it's incredibly good for gwen the centipede demon um quailag so as you can see here we've got the black knight shield and the guaranteed titanite chunk from that black knight yeah which is why during this build it was uh integral to killing that black knight again for those all important titanite chunks that we need so now we go back to the bonfire uh, obviously at this point we will be going back to where the black knight is to get the blue tier stone ring yeah. just to reinforce this um, if you do want to go back the, the only thing we do here is rest at the bonfire and make our way up to the drake via the shortcut we just got after the taurus fight so you're not actually yeah. missing anything uh, we do get our endurance up to 16 once your endurance is at 16 you want to start putting points into your vitality to put that up to 16 just in case you've got more souls than we do at this point you want your vitality endurance to be even then after six after they're both at 16 put your endurance to 20 put your vitality to 20 yeah. um, and then the most you want to put your endurance at is 26. Um, 26 is where you want to be for about Sen's Fortress. So right yeah. there we're going to go take the dragon. We're going to go uh, get the Drake Sword because uh, it's going to carry us through past the Gargoyles. Because it is insanely good. It's a 200 damage base weapon. It has no scaling so it will always do 200 damage regardless of your strength and dex. Which is why it works brilliantly for a build like this where we're using the minimum requirements. Um, and uh, I mean the Drake Sword can essentially carry all the way through to Sense Fortress but you will have a weapon that will do more damage than the Drake Sword by then anyway we should hope yeah I mean unless you get really lucky and you happen across I don't know the, the 10 dragon skills you need to upgrade the Drake Sword to plus 5 and you happen to have the 50,000 souls you also need to upgrade to plus 5 then good luck by the way <laughs> if you somehow manage that then well fucking done because we could see no possible way of doing it because Valley of Drakes is a shithole um, but yeah, if you can manage that, then well done. But we went into Sense Fortress with a Claymore. Uh, the Claymore or the, or the Halberd, I don't know. Um, I, I'm fairly sure it was a Claymore because I, I do remember using so this the Claymore. So one hollow time. totally fucks me up. Really, really irritating. Just kept blocking and doing shit. And I don't know what the fuck was going on. It must have been late at night or something like that. I don't know. Could have just done that from the beginning and kicked him, you know. But yeah, he's finally dead. Um, he can drop the shield and he can drop the shield. He can drop his spear as well, by the way. So yeah, all, um, all those hollows, like we said, yeah, they, they can drop. They can like, drop their weapon, their armor, their shield, anything. Yeah, the the, the hollow. They can also drop shards drop as well, which is really, well, which is really yeah, convenient. Like the hollow, oh, yeah, the we'll hollow really soldiers well. do drop a lot of good stuff. The hollow warriors kind of drop a whole lot of crap, but yeah. the soldiers do drop good stuff. It, well, the armor isn't very good, but the obviously the waist cloth Look, is good. As long as they drop the waist cloth, the shield, the long sword, or a titanite shard, then you're in luck. Yeah, there, there, there we go, that summed that up. Pretty much summarised it, there's four items of value that they will drop. Everything else is essentially useless, so it's going to take you about 30 arrows on average to take the drake. If every single arrow you hit uh, the drake's tail with is when the drake's tail is there, it will take you about 30 arrows. But if you do what we do here and we get a couple of hits and when the drake's tail gets close, then it will take you less than 30 because of course your bone loses damage over range. And as a short bow, it loses damage really quickly over range. But at point blank range, you'll do maximum damage with it, which is what you've seen there. If you can hit the tail anyway. As you can see, I miss a few times. And few. then I get it with the second hit as it comes closer. So then we're just going to speed this bit up, just as you, you know. Can yeah, you, you, you can see what to do. Um, just keep shooting the Drake's tail until you do have the Drake's sword. Uh, 16 strength, 12 dex requirements, 200 damage as I've said. Um, also gives you a magic and a fire buff as well. I yeah, believe. it's 15 points to this. Yeah, it adds 15 points to your magic and fire. Uh, your natural defenses, not your armor defenses. It's just your character gains an extra 15 uh, points in defense against magic and fire while wielding the drake sword. I believe it's the same with every dragon weapon. You gain a magic and fire bonus. No, they all do slightly different things. Um, the Dragon King Great the the Dragon King Great Axe does the same as the Drake Sword, yeah, and I'm cool. fairly sure the Obsidian Sword does the same as well. So the three that matter do the same. Yeah. So now that's us now got the Drake Sword, so that was easy, and now yeah. this will make the game. Easy. Not even in any danger, but yeah, the Drake Sword's just a, a, an instant upgrade. I mean, it, it weighs six, which is the same weight as the Claymore and the Halberd, which is the weapons we're going to be using for the majority of the game. Now at this point, we want to have a light roll, so under under twenty five percent. Yep. So we 
unequip the gauntlets and the headgear and this allows us to be able to run yeah. fast. So now your gear should just be quite simply heater shield, drake sword, chest piece and leggings and that's you. So, so you want to run on the bridge and run off so the dragon will blow everything up for you and give 555 souls. So now we want to be able to run to the bonfire and the dragon. So we, all, we die at this point, irritatingly. Twice because uh, the dragon catches off guard twice. The first time the dragon... Everyone has a chance of this happening. The dragon has a set attack pattern. Um, its attack on the bridge is picked at random. I think we may have ran a little bit too early because what happens is that if you run underneath it, it does this where it jumps straight up in the air. And what happens is when it jumps straight up without turning or without blasting fire in front of it, it blasts fire directly underneath it, which sends the flames both in front and behind it. So it sends them across the entire span of the bridge, and there is really no escape for that. So and that we died there. Us. So there was really nothing we were able to do at that point, essentially. That, that is essentially the only time you will die to the dragon on the bridge every time is if he does that constantly, in which case, gutted, I suppose, because there is no way to stop it. Um, but anyway... We, no real harm done because we do spawn just right underneath the dragon essentially. Yeah, that's that's the great thing about the shortcut and the great thing about grabbing the drake sword. It's so close to a bonfire that even if you do die, um, you can just go farm some more souls, get some more arrows if you need to. Um, if for whatever reason you do die while trying to get the drake sword, it will reset the dragon's health on the tail, so you need to hit the dragon some more all over again. So you can't hit it with 10 arrows, fuck off, come back, 10 arrows, fuck off, come back, 10 arrows and then get the sword. It has to be 30 arrows consistently while you're in the same spot. So, so, again, we stay here because this keeps us safe from dragon fire. Yeah. He runs back and grabs his souls because he's a tricky bastard. This is you that's playing. Is it? Yeah, I do it then because I'm pro. Whatever. No, because you jump into that corner. I always run right past it. Because uh, you took your drake sword off as well so you can sprint so past. So, I put more armour on just in case he does a fire attack on me and I might be able to survive it from wearing more armour. If, if, if he did that jump up attack, there is no chance. I, I think that's an instant kill. Okay. So, I run past it, it and Even I make it into the bonfire room and but not I good enough. Yeah, so I thought this thing here is a safe area from the dragon. I think anybody else would think that it would be as well, but partly the dragon would be fire through walls. So the yep. dragon hits me and the fire attack keeps on going on and then as I wake up, bang. That one hit twice, so game over there, nothing we could do. But it just goes to show you, it's kind of educational. It gave us an experience so that we know that we cannot stand there and be safe, so don't do that either. You want to basically, I don't know if you would have seen it, there was a little archway in front of us as we're standing up. You want to just basically sprint directly for that. Get out there because the dragon definitely cannot hit you there, and then it will fly away and you're free to loot the claymore and the soul packet on the bridge. And I mean, there's nothing more, we don't even need to talk about the claymore, you already know what it is. It's a giant two-handed fucking sword and it's a beast in this game. One of the best weapons in the game without a doubt. It's very good for, um... It's good for off. PvP as well as PvE to be fair. Yeah. yeah. This running attack is immense in PvP, it has this really cool angle on it that it can sometimes hit behind their shield because it attacks, it basically attacks in a full 360 degree circle so if you're running get behind them while attacking, then you can get behind their shield, do some damage, and it will stagger them, and then you can just stun lock them with the two handers, which is just brilliant. So you see me here. This is I've taken over at this point, so I'm just gonna like right. I'll do it right this time. Uh, sprinting across the bridge and going straight in for the sunlight altar right away. Uh, you want to jump in here, and you're safe. So this is us now at Undead Parish. And um, so we're not gonna go any further than this in the video. Uh, Undead Parish will be covered in the next video we upload. Um, so at this point all you really need to do is wait for the drake to fly away, well, we're going to pick up our souls first, um, wait for the drake to fly away before you rest at the bonfire, you want it to fly away so you can pick up this stuff without having any hassle from the hollows, so you grab your soul of an aimless warrior and you grab your claymore, back to the bonfire, rest up and level up your vitality. Um, there isn't really anything else you can do at this point, um, so we're going to... Well. Obviously, take the soul packets to get yeah. as many souls as you can. You want you want to uh, basically no uh, mass your souls together. Even though we died, it still uh, gave us an extra thousand so extra souls that we wouldn't have had. So. Yeah, because we get an extra five hundred fifty-five twice on that bridge, so that was that actually helped uh, regarding the fact that we actually used that to level our vitality up to just fourteen. Is it thirteen? Yeah, we, by yeah one. we can only put it up by one more level. That's but unfortunate. Yeah, so I mean, that is essentially it. Um, that is everything in Nundead Burg. Uh, 
So by the time, so at this point you want to have 12 dex and 16 strength. You want your vitality and your endurance uh, 13 and 16 respectively. Um, that's essentially following our build the exact same way that it is. So we're gonna continue this video. Um, we're gonna continue this in the next video where we go through the dead parish and absolutely rape the gargoyle something fierce. So we'll see you guys later in the next video. We hope you enjoyed and we hope it was informative.